Hey everyone, this is going to be a recorded episode. It's a long conversation with artist, illustrator and editor Vinayak Varma. And the topic is artificial intelligence versus artist. In recent times, we have seen AI tools becoming very, very good at the things that so far human beings were doing and under the impression that they were the only ones who could do it. Things like writing, things like making art. And uh, this has thrown up a lot of existential questions for art as an industry, artists as individuals, as well as artists as entrepreneurs. Watch the interview in its entirety. Uh, we talk about a lot of things, and uh, among those things are the future of art, media, culture, and entertainment. We talk about ethics, we talk about the right and wrong of things, we talk about what artists can do to stay ahead of this, of the of the, all the issues that emerge as a result of this revolution. So, without much further delay, here's my conversation with Vinayak Varma. I hope you like it. Whatever feedback you have, you're most welcome to leave it in the comments. Verma, who is an artist and an illustrator and an editor of at least one science fiction anth- anthology called uh, Strange Worlds, Strange Times, has a problem with artificial intelligence taking over the work that we artists do. So in a nutshell, if you had to summarize your position, what would you say your problem is? <laughs> this nutshell is difficult because I, I feel it is a fairly complex problem. Uh, so the thing is, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm aware that we're using, I mean, we do use artificial intelligence in various, uh, in various small things that we're kind of, you know, uh, I, I mean, I, I, if, for example, even in, you know, uh, as I was telling you earlier, on uh, Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever it is that I'm using to kind of draw digitally, hmm. uh, uh, when I'm not, you know, when obviously when I'm not doing traditional uh, art, you know, on a physical medium, when I'm doing something digitally, there are little AIs there that are kind of, you know, constantly sort of working in the background, improving certain things. Uh, and of course, you know, this is something that, that uh, for me, it, it, even that is something that I've had to sort of grapple with. I, I keep thinking that I'm, am I losing my, you know, traditional skills because mm-hmm. I'm allowing these AIs to do little, I mean, things like, you know, it just improves your brush stroke uh, when you're using a certain brush or it kind of, there are, there are things that sort of, uh, you know, simulate a watercolor or an oil paint effect, and you know mm. things like that, and which are which are, I suppose, I mean, AIs or alg- some some sort of algorithms that are doing these things. So it's not like I'm divorced from this the world of the AI, you know, in my work entirely. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, an important point is- to that's an important point to make. Vinayak is not a technophobe. Yeah. I am not a technophobe. <laughs> we are artists right. whose work primarily involves you know the digital space. And we are concerned right. about the kind of overreach that is happening into artistic spheres. So that is what Vinayak exactly. is talking Exactly. I mean, yes, because, you know, I mean, <coughs> as I see it, it's... Now, so the difference is, I, I feel, it's it's one thing to have technology that sort of enables uh, an artist to sort of practice their art a little better, where, you know, it kind of facilitates certain improvements and so on. It's another thing to create a technology that that replaces artists altogether hmm. um, and which is what the new sort of art AIs uh, are doing. And um, so, so the question is, I mean, you know, so what, what these AIs are doing is it's, I, I feel it's replacing the need for an artist altogether. Hmm. So if it does that, then, you know, what are we left with really? I mean, like if you take away the need to create, because this is the, the sort of basic human impulses to really to create, right? I mean, we're here, here and kind of, you know, thinking and kind of doing things in order to kind of, you know, have fun with the act of creation. And if that goes away, I mean, what, what is technology finally there to sort of enable? That's my, that's my issue. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, there's a, there are a lot of questions obviously to grapple with, but at the base of it is what, who, who is this technology helping? Uh, because see, for me, I'm a, so I, I went to design school and I'm, I'm a, uh, you know, designer, I'm a practicing designer. I'm, I do, you know, uh, branding work and so on, but, you know, at, in design, a, a fundamental sort of tenet that kind of um, goes across all design domains is the, is that um, when you're kind of in your, in your process of 
uh, evaluating a problem in order to find a solution because design is a problem solving uh, you know process uh, uh, and which you know which ideally is something that should you know a process that should inform uh, any kind of technology as well one of the basic things that we uh, think of as a as designers is to uh, or you know what we do is to sort of address all stakeholders and kind of talk to all all different stakeholders in a where there is a problem area mm. and uh, look at all their problems and then kind of try and find a solution i mean obviously you're not going to always find a solution that's going to fit everyone's issue but then at least try and take that into account okay i feel like you know here it they keep talking about how uh, you know these ais are there to you know we shouldn't be afraid of it because it's actually going to make our, our, you know our uh, thing with our, you know our art process is easier our writing process is easier way ways of music creation easier and so on uh, i i question this somehow you know i i i feel like they have not asked us whether we actually want so... this thing let me ask you something <laughs> let me ask you something you you mentioned a point about uh, a it's replacing the artist altogether and b the artist yes. has not been consulted uh, that's so, right so uh, within the artistic circles do you know of any artists who see this as a positive development anyone yes, who sees I mean, this I, as, I, like are, are there perspective from artists who say that this is great yeah so you know i i do i don't want to name names but i mean i do see a lot of people particularly i think i i've seen this more in terms of more than you know uh, traditional illustrators i i see this a lot more with actually um, people who use uh, art as a sort of supplementary activity so you mm. know uh, i see a lot of designers uh, architects and mm. you know so on who uh, f- for whom Uh, art is just i mean illustration is just essentially uh, you know an add on to their to their work uh, where they using this as a sort of conceptual tool and i get it i mean you know even honestly when mid journey came out even I, like i was very excited to see what this was and even i tried it out it was several months ago and and but then the moment i tried it i mean the moment i tried it and i saw how powerful this was and then you know and then like literally over the over you know when we saw how over the course of 2 to 3 weeks or whatever this thing started learning and kind of improving so much i mean i that put the fear of god in me to be honest because i you know, i mean and i am an atheist so you know, uh, the fear of a god uh, because, that will one day be i mean yeah exactly it's is this digital god that we have created now yeah. you know who's going to supplant us uh, but i mean if, find it sort of uh, comes down to sort of like a philosophical issue which is um, why why are we doing any of this in the first place i mean why why live in the first place why mm-hmm. you know go through life in the first place and and for me you know i mean it's always it, it i'm not i mean i don't consider myself an artist or a writer or you know any of these things i just think of myself as somebody who's you know just sort of enjoying the act of creation at various points in in various ways and and if that can sort of make me money that's great uh, but but the thing is i feel we're moving towards a world where if we're going to outsource that basic process of creation because you know i i've been saying this uh, even on my sort of twitter and instagram rants and things that it, oh, it yeah, really yeah. is uh, i mean yeah uh, i'll just take a moment to tell people to follow vinayak on instagram what is your handle again oh it's uh, on instagram it's moral panic button m o r a l Panic. Fo- follow okay. moral panic button on instagram and check out his AI, his rants about ai art and you'll find them okay. to be quite a alarming and, and uh, too uh, enlightening <laughs> yeah. no uh, i mean so it, it, what i was saying in some of those rants was that it's actually kind of you know I, i it's part of these presentations i used to give to school kids and so on on illustration and uh, and you know i always talk about how Uh, illustration really is actually the oldest form of i mean documented form of human expression because you know starting with cave paintings cave paintings uh, yeah. and you know so we it's it's a it's a mode of expression that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years so we are, and we are now sort of at at this at this point where suddenly you know we 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 kind of completely kind of breaking away from that in a in in a way that i feel that we have really not taken the time to kind of understand what the implications are hmm. um so i mean said, people who are career illustrators see the implications i think but there have been conversations about ai replacing the artist 
but we have seen mm-hmm. technological changes in the past also where people have panicked about a technology replacing something like tv was said to replace cinema uh, the tractor was supposedly going to replace the farm workman and uh, do you see a fundamental difference this time or is this more of the same and do you think people like us might be panicking for little or no reason i mean you have a valid point here and uh, in the yeah it's it's true and you know there have been like ma- many many major paradigm shifts like this in the past and and to some extent for me this is a this is i mean clearly also it's a it's a it's a very selfish problem as well uh, but it you know in this case uh you know you think of like the history of art you know we've always a uh, history of art craft you know whatever uh, in in visual arts particularly there's always been a sort of tradition and i think pretty much every country around the world where you know there there is there is a sort of educational system in whatever form that kind of you know teaches artists and then artists are there to kind of partly to kind of just create pretty things to uh, yeah. uh you know to uh, to Uh, you know as as a ornamental kind of uh, things uh, you know for homes and you know so on but uh, 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 and objects and things like that packaging and this and that but uh, uh, you know on a vase or whatever uh, and then uh, uh, the other aspect of it is simply to communicate and we've always existed i think in some form or the other throughout throughout you know human history uh, here i feel uh, you know and and i think that uh, and the reason that the these art forms have sort of endured also is because at some level it is uh, i mean it, at a very at a basic level it is an economic activity uh, it's tied into you know it is a means of living uh, you know people get paid to kind of do this work and and which is also why there is a reason for it to be there so then you know there's a reason for these art schools to be there and for teachers to kind of keep teaching because you know at at a very basic level it it might even if it's not lucrative at least it'll put food on the table hmm. um now i i feel the difference is that if suddenly there is a uh, you know i mean the the people who will endure after this thing i think will be a very niche crowd hmm. uh, when, once the art ai is really sort of take over i feel it'll be a, it'll be a crowd which a already has um a, a social following uh you know on the social media and so on or whatever or who have who have like uh, you know who are famous people essentially that will be one set of uh, people who uh, who are th- and then I, i think you know uh, people who are in extremely sort of uh, you know who, uh, l- let's say you know there are some people who who just want something that's hand painted or whatever it is so that again becomes a niche area but i think in terms of like a you know a regular sort of a basic uh uh economic kind of a thing where act, as an economic activity such as um, uh you know i mean just millions of jobs that are right now you know artists are needed for things like concept art and you know whatever yeah. backgrounds and just basic things you know storyboarding this and that these are the jobs that are going to go away right now and once those jobs go away which is like literally millions of jobs you know there is no longer a reason for art schools to exist because art schools will suddenly seem kind of uh, you know seem completely redundant and not only that for them also i mean people are not going to be willing to pay money to put their kids through art school yeah. uh, parents are not going to be willing to because you know because what is the point i mean it, as an artist you must have heard from certain clients isme kya ye to main apne word pe bhi bana lunga ya aisa kuch absolutely right yeah, so absolutely. this is another yeah. level right now the client of yeah. that sort has two choices one your price and a cheaper price tomorrow yes. the choice is going to be any price versus no price yes A- absolutely that yeah uh, i mean uh, because see i mean as it is even when i went to art school which was like 20, 22 years ago hmm. uh, at 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 that point you know even then like i had relatives uncles and aunties all kinds of people you know asking oh you know what are you going to do after this the only choice they were they, everyone was like okay you have to i, I suppose get into advertising yeah. that's the only yeah. kind of thing cuz for them they couldn't even you know grapple with the thing of someone wanting to do art or illustration as a as a career because you know what kind of money are you going to make if you draw draw you know draw for picture, children's books or whatever it is and th- this was back then before all of this happened now you know parents are going to be even less inclined to do this and i really you know my heart really goes out to all the kids who are going to be graduating from art schools this year next year you know <laughs> the next whoever's in art school right now 
because I know the pain of, you know, that thing, because it takes you, it, it really does take you a few years to kind of break out in the industry and kind of, you know, make some kind of name for yourself. It really takes you a good four, four or five years, uh, unless you're that well connected or, you know, in, in, in the case of India, you know, I mean, I am privileged in that sense, but, you know, if, if unless you're Savarna, mm. uh, unless you have access to certain networks, uh, things like that you're you're basically sort of becomes you know, very part of my friends you're screwed yeah you know so and um uh, and <clears throat> now it's going to be even worse you know because so many people I and mean, people would have taken loans to go to art schools and things like that because you know for so many years it's been the last 10 years or so it's been uh built up as this uh, a lucrative thing in, in the animation industry or yeah. the gaming industry or whatever it is and now, the moment uh, big companies like ea or you know whoever it is start switching to uh, you know, AI art for backgrounds, for basic processes. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's going to be havoc. I don't, I don't, I can't even, I don't know where to begin predicting what's going to happen, yeah. but I do my, think there's going my to be. Personal, my personal nightmare is uh, Amazon Kindle store. You go and you buy a book and you read it. And after you finish it, you realize that at no point of, at no point in the creation of this book was any human being involved. Like right. the, the, the cover was designed by a machine. The title was designed by a machine. The concept was by a machine. The <laughs> story, entire story was written by the machine. It was uploaded to yeah. Amazon by a machine. And now that you have read it, you realize there was no mind behind it. So that's my nightmare. scenario. The other nightmare scenario is like you and I talked about like there being two aspects to art, right? One is the joy of expressing yourself and the need yeah. to express yourself, by the way. Absolutely. And two, uh, the artist as a decorator. The artist whose yes. work adds aesthetic value to people's homes, their walls, their, uh, you know, their bed sheets and stuff like that. So as far as the craft of it is concerned, perhaps the machine can do it, but the art aspect of it is not something that is apparent to the people who are buying. They only see the end product and they see, Hey, this is pretty, this is moving. This is beautiful. But the process that goes into making a piece of art, what it means to the artist and the feeling that the artist wants to evoke in the person who consumes the art, that aspect, even if it disappears, my fear is that it will disappear and nobody will know that it is gone. Mm. Because I typed uh, into chat GPT today, write a deeply yes. emotional personal essay about life and loss. It wrote a piece. I know human beings who can't do that good a job. <laughs> right. That is the problem because yeah. I want people to experience what writing is like. Right. And I feel like tomorrow, if uh, there's an assignment, like write some, write a story or write a personal essay about your trip to your village. Someone will just type two sentences. Hey, write to <laughs> write an essay about my trip to my village. Yeah, you know, name I mean, of the village. Is, fact, name of the village is this. And yeah. put some emotion in there and write about my grandmother. And then he goes away, comes back two seconds yes. later. There is an essay ready. He copy pastes and sends it. So I want children to be able to experience what it feels like to create art. To and I, essay, my right, fear yeah. is that that oh, will right. be gone. Yes. I mean, uh, actually what you said is already coming to pass because I, I, I read just a week ago about how uh, a lot of US universities, I think professors and so on are really worried because kids are already starting to send in, uh, you know, essays that are generated by Chachi. Yeah. At least at this point, you know, we're at a point where we can still recognize that some parts of it are clunky and it might have been written by an AI or whatever. But, you know, considering how quickly this, uh, the, these things have started getting more and more sophisticated in a year, we will not be able to tell the difference, obviously. But I mean, what you say is uh, in terms of, you know, craft is... It's an important question to ask because, you know, I, I mean, one of the cornerstones of uh, any kind of art practice or, you know, writing, illustration, whatever it is, uh, is really rigor, right? I mean, it, it, you know, only through rigor, through, you know, the challenges that you face as you kind of get better with your, I mean, the only way to get better, in fact, is through the challenge itself. Mm. Uh, you know, you come across these obstacles you, you know, and you realize that your skill is not sufficient to meet that obstacle. So you up your skill yeah. and then you get past that obstacle and then you become a better artist through that. And you have to keep going through. I mean, I'm still, I, I mean, you know, after so many years, I'm, I'm nowhere near, like, you know, I'm, I'm uh, sort of, uh, you know, like 10% as good as what I would ideally yeah. like to be. Uh, and that is based on, you know, the art that I enjoy uh, looking at and the kind of writing that I enjoy reading and, you know, all of that. 
uh, I, and and I, but you know that process itself of getting better is a very enjoyable process because every time you hit a certain milestone or you re realize, okay, you know now you know, oh that I've crafted a really nice sentence here, uh, and maybe you know it, it, uh, it, you know if I kind of apply this to a larger yeah. kind of thing, maybe this I can extend it to an essay or I can make it a short story or a novel or whatever it is. So you you know that's how you gain confidence in yourself, obviously as a uh, yeah, my, as a creative person. My fear is like we hear about, you know, entire languages that go extinct because there is no one left who speaks them. Yes. There are yeah. uh, ways of crafting furniture that are no longer done by anyone because the human beings, the last human being who did that died 20 years ago without teaching anyone because nobody wants to because yeah. everyone is just buying ready-made furniture. So yeah. I think yeah. in some ways what happened to furniture or things like that is happening to art right now. But here's an interesting yeah. digression from this. Yeah. You're a digital artist. I'm a writer who uses the keyboard. <clears throat> do you think that this might increase the value of the people who do offline work, who, who, who can write in front of your eyes, use a pen, pencil, brush, and create a work of art on paper that rivals anything that an AI can do? Because I don't think our, you know, uh, like, for example, when I'm an reading a book right now we are in the situation i'm reading a story i can't tell if a machine wrote it or a human being wrote it right mm -hmm. right now or in the near future but when i'm reading a story if i don't know if a machine wrote it or a human being wrote it my expectation is always that a mind like mine created what i'm consuming mm -hmm. right so do you think that if we reach a future where people are no longer able to tell the difference between the fake between the AI generated thing and the real thing, uh, it will increase the value of the few people who do still do things uh, in the re using the real method. Like, do you think? Do you think that writing by hand, drawing by hand, that will become a different economy on its own? So, I mean, this is a hard question because you know, on the one hand you need the you know you need the need to kind of you know create these things in order to get better at it so that you can eventually get to a point of refinement and sort of nuance where you can produce like beautiful works of art hmm. and if you no longer need to do that i mean you know you take the example of i mean someone like salman rushdie who, who began as a as an advertising copywriter who you know who studied literature and so on obviously yeah. but then you know his craft began at the most commercial kind of a, you know, kind of thing, writing ad copy. Uh, and then, you know, he, you know, went on to write, I mean, win the book of bookers yeah. and, you know, all of that stuff. And got stabbed. Uh, but there is that, yeah, I mean, there's a journey that you have to take, right? As a, yeah. as a creative professional, there is a, there is a journey. And if you do, if that, if the need for that journey is nipped in the bud, I don't know whether we will get to a place where we can rival these RTAs. But I, I am, I, I'm firmly of the belief that, any artist or any writer or any musician or whoever who's at the top of their game as a human, I mean, a human who is at the top of their game will any day outmatch, like, you know, will, will do better than a, than a, an AI. Uh, simply because, you know, we, we have lived, you know, we, we, I mean, we, we know what it's like to live life and we know the, you know, sort of all the, I mean, the texture of life and we know, we know the, all the color of life and this is not something, you know, an AI can kind of take existing patterns and kind of try and repurpose them and do it at a very high level. But unless you've gone out there and kind of, you know, uh, been a person uh, and seen how the world works and just experienced it and felt the breeze on your face and, you know, mm. all of that, you know, it's, uh, you're, you're not going to be able to reflect on those things and kind of put put them in. Uh, you know, in beautiful words, or uh, you know, uh, express it in a particular kind of uh, way in, in light or whatever it is. I I do not think an AI will ever be able to do cre recreate uh, you know something that uh, you my, know like a Leonardo da Vinci or whoever is. Done. My, my my fear is that the AI yes will never be able to do that, but it will yeah. be able to do a close enough job that most people yeah. will not be able to tell the difference. In fact, nobody That's may be problem. able to tell the difference. That is exactly the problem, actually. Yeah. It's it's as you as you mentioned, mm -hmm. I think you know earlier when we spoke, uh, this this thing of everything sort of getting flattened and becoming a sort of mediocre landscape. Uh, 
uh, that i think is the real worry you know i, I mean uh, there will there will obviously be a few artists and writers and whoever it is who will kind of despite all of this get that get good and keep kind of producing good work but if if the standard is this if the standard is a mediocre standard you know then you know what are we kind of uh, i mean yeah, if, yeah. If that, that's all we have to push against yeah then it just gets uh, yeah i mean there is there, there's a you're right i mean that's that, that's definitely a concern like um, uh, there is a, a concern about how like ai is copying basically right they're going through a vast amount of content and they're building their intelligence based on what they read now <clears throat> because of this literature like we already have this problem on the human level also right people don't think originally enough there are comic i there used to be several years ago i met a comic book young comic book artist who learned how to draw human anatomy by copying from comic books and as a result right. even when he was drawing a beggar by the roadside he had six pack abs right so the yeah. person who was yeah. mentoring him told him go look at real people go look at real life and then you will understand what real life looks like so then now he's much better he's in fact fantastic but the the point of literature is that when we are making something we look at life and we try to emulate it ai looks at the emulation of real life made by other people mm-hmm. so the when we define literature what we are saying okay so this is uh, based on life or visions of the future which is science fiction and fantasy which both of you are kind of part of so as far as ai goes the only place its beautiful prose beautiful art is going to come from is a the past and b an understanding built on what others have done till now it's not going to be a vision of the future it, even if it is a vision of the future it is going to be based on visions of the future that have been had that by is, other people that's right yeah yeah it's always i mean you know we kind of stuck in the past it's yeah for a futuristic technology it's always stuck in the past that's yeah. like a very interesting uh, ironic you know, thing like yeah a, a ironic thing yeah i it, it, it's it's funny the i mean these these massive limitations there are i mean massive fundamental limitations to this obviously and uh, i mean the question i i keep asking you know the question i've been sort of wondering i mean asking myself in the last few months is why is it that you know so these are these are the questions that people have, i mean obviously we are we are you know you and i are thinking about this and a lot of there are other other people thinking about it a you know the limitations in terms of you know everything every result being predicated on you know patterns that have already been built up so it doesn't really you know doesn't even come close to the human sort of imagination in that sense because mm. we we can dream up worlds that you know that that have never existed in the past you know that's something that we have uh, uh, you know it, it uh, uh like there are a lot of problems that it's trying uh, supposedly kind of solving which are you know are sort of non existent problems there are a lot of things like that which you know uh, and and of course fundamentally there are the ethical issues as well in terms of you know who what are these data sets and you know who who they belong to and you know uh, and the fact that they're all stolen at this point uh, you know just from uh, like taken from people's uh, um, uh, online portfolios without giving them credit or payment or any of that But there are various questions of this nature that that are occurring to all of us right now why is it that the people who are creating these ais and kind of deploying them are not asking these questions is my issue really because uh, you know it's like i, I remember you know when uh, I mean, many years ago when when uh, they were doing uh, you know uh, cloning experiments with dolly the sheep and you know all of that i think they did a Uh, they cloned an ib uh, like an ibex uh, somewhere uh, mm. uh, in in somewhere in europe um, so when they were cloning these animals and they kind of when they started doing that immediately immediately people started asking questions about you know human uh, cloning and then you know and then the ethics of this whole thing and yeah. you know and then and there were a lot of committees formed all around the world and people were talking and obviously that's a medical kind of thing and you know there are sort of very direct implications in terms of our physical bodies and you know and what how, how that can work and you know uh, all of that i mean there was there was a lot of philosophical discussion going around even in in the technology world and you know in the medical communities everywhere uh, and at a at a basic level even at a you know uh, at a policy level and so on uh, 
here you know because art is always i suppose uh, you know is something that has been sort of denigrated in some sense while yeah. we always celebrate it and we celebrate art as this great thing at the same time we also denigrate it mm. you know we also al- always think of it as something that's like a lesser process even though you know i mean we all live for it i mean if everybody you know uh, uh, kind of uh, the, the end of their day they always go to a netflix or you know read a book or, or you know watch a like listen to music or whatever and all of this is art and that is their release and yeah. if not for that you know they would have no release uh, and nobody is asking these questions of art because art is considered you know inferior in in as a human process yeah uh, and I, I, i'm asking i i why are we not forming those committees now you know because this is a big issue right I because do we don't think, think art is, is important we don't think art is important enough to protect that's why Yes. Art, like you know our definition of culture itself is so skewed that we think of all that has happened like if you ask most people who are uh, from your average average you know upper caste upper class urban middle class people they will say something like uh, uh, you know culture is th- their definition of culture seems to be all that has happened till now culture is a thing of the yeah. past we must keep the past as it is and as far as the problem with ai creating art and literature is concerned there is no uh, conflict with their view if ai prevents new things from coming into new original culture from coming into being their definition of culture is not hurt at all because they know what culture is they know with absolute certainty that they understand what culture is maybe that is why so basically culture is just set in stone and not something that yeah. that you know has to be has, has to be created constantly yeah. our understanding of is, culture is, our understanding yeah. of culture is very limited and therefore we don't think of what you do what i do what art artists today do we don't think of that as culture and that is why we think iska isse culture pe kya prabhav padega that's a sad thing i mean unfortunately culture always exists in hindsight so let me ask you this we have seen excitement about tech phenomena before right when social media yes. came along like a new tool happens everyone is hey if I, shiny new toy and everyone gets on it and starts connecting with friends and family and uh, 10 years later we find out that children are <laughs> dying by suicide because of inferiority complex induced by constant exposure to social media posts right yeah. so uh, chat gpt and dali and uh, mid journey are at one stage right now they're growing at an alarmingly fast rate in their ability to do things yeah. but in addition to this what other perils do you perhaps as a science fiction enthusiast also science fiction writer editor etc also what do you see what what possible perils do you see facing us in the years to come i mean as we you know as we've already discussed i think one of the one of the biggest per- perils is really is this sort of flattening of the landscape you know i mean in the sense of uh, you know just i mean and obviously this is something it's funny because technology i mean technologists always use this as the thing they say you know you we are sort of uh, you know they use this idea of flattening as uh, i mean this uh, sort of uh, what do you call it, this metaphor of flattening uh, mm. as a, uh, like uh, as a kind of uh, as something the, that says the globe is flat uh, the world is democratizing flat. you know yeah 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 and they say that you know they say that as a thing of democratizing something and i i don't feel that something like this is really democratizing in in any way i mean you know maybe it's democratizing for a very small percentage of like you know already privileged uh, like a po- mm. population but but uh, uh, not beyond that i mean the thing obviously is uh, obviously one of the big issues here is that it's going to be like uh, we're entering a much more mediocre world uh, that that's for sure and we've seen that you know we've actually seen that in the last i, I would say in the last you know 30 40 years in, in the music industry where the music industry in many ways has actually been a forerunner for a lot yeah. of these these issues. a lot of these tragedies uh, in fact everything yeah, that is happening to us now also, has already happened to musicians yes and yeah. and but at the same time also you know you see the responses are also much stronger in the music industry because for instance you know stable diffusion i think tried to do uh, something in the music industry and immediately i think like i think you know their lawyers and so on yeah. responded and obviously there quite pow- there are powerful people there who can kind of uh, you know uh, thing which so is there like, will be you know, there, there will are be two things here right when you say the music industry yeah. you mean you mean the record labels or do you mean the artists because those are different things so both uh, you know yeah so so let's actually talk about the art you know and how mm. how technology has sort of affected the art over there 
Uh, and you know, I don't want to be one of those sort of boomer type people who's who's who says you know all modern music sucks and it's you mm. know it, it's only like uh, music from up to the '90s that's great and you know everything after that is just gone down the drain because of technology. Because there is, I mean, there are there's a lot of great music even mm. now. But if you look at pop, you know, just the pop charts like the mm. top, you know, the Billboard top hundred or top, you know, whatever those those charts. If you look at there is there is a qualitative difference between you know when music used to be made using like mo- mostly using real instruments for i mean in the instrumentation is one aspect of it because you know the uh, obviously we do have digital instruments now that are that are are you know quite sophisticated and kind of can bring a certain texture and nuance to these things but but uh, in terms of production as well you know so uh, like back in the day i think just purely because of the limitations that were there in the music industry you like the uh, you know like sometimes a singer will go a little off key i mean you know or uh, like uh, in the middle of a song uh, you know the drummer may not actually hold down the beat uh, exactly right throughout mm. uh, or something you know there yeah. will be little shifts uh, ch- uh, mistakes that happen you mistakes but those mistakes are actually what kind of bring uh, you know i mean make, make it listenable really and make it fun to listen to there are those are memorable things you know and just things that someone will just throw in their impromptu you know like an impromptu thing somewhere like some like somewhere this that mm. which may not fit in with like a preconceived structure but that is i mean that is exactly what art is supposed to be right i mean you're supposed to kind of you see a pattern and then you break it and then you make that break in the pattern itself beautiful and then that becomes more you know more beautiful like the entire thing becomes more beautiful because of that and now unfortunately you know with this these things of manufactured beats like the in production basically everything is uh, you know like everything is perfect the like you know beats are all on time uh, like the uh, you know there are no uh, uh, like uh, you know auto tune and things like that are kind of making sure that there are no off off notes and things like that and when you don't hear mistakes it it obviously you know i mean there is a part of you that kind of feels like you know this is not a human thing yeah. and uh, and everything is also starting to sound the same i mean I'm, you know it, it really is in the pop charts again you know i have to say that it's not in the indie indie music scene or any of that because there are there are fantastic musicians out there doing really interesting creative things uh, and you know going beyond what what but do, these are not the people obviously that are getting into the mainstream and i think that is the problem here because the mainstream culture is really getting uh, you know eroded in a big way uh, and when the mainstream gets eroded mainstream is what everyone first sees i mean we all i think all of us as you know readers or people who experience music or experience art or whatever we all begin by kind of entering the mainstream and then branching out into other you know into niche areas and then kind of getting more and more subtle and when the mainstream itself gets dull i mean you know do, where where are we getting access to these other branches yeah, yeah. you know so as i don't an, know if i'm making sense no no it does actually and my next question was going to be based on this also uh, that's music and you're yeah. an artist and a writer sorry yeah that's so right. <laughs> so so no i get it but but what is the analog of the problems being faced by the music industry in the writing yeah. and art sphere so in the art sphere i mean for instance uh, you know uh, there was this there was a i mean if you want an earlier example you know let's say like uh, you know at the turn of like between the uh, late 90s and the early 2000s suddenly you know the, we had uh, a lot of uh, there was a lot of reliance suddenly on um, clip art for instance uh, and that was an early example in yeah. you know how that and and so there was a, po- a point up to which graphic designers would Uh, create by hand create icons and you know uh, things like that so there was so if you look at actually any graphic design you know even public uh, you know g- like sort of government um, uh, you know things that the government has commissioned and things like that which are, which you know traditionally is like you know it's the most boring form of graphic design is something that any government may have commissioned but if you look at things that governments around the world have commissioned like until you know the 80s and early 90s and so on there is beautiful graphic design to be seen over there and then there's suddenly a point i think from the late 90s early 2000s onwards when you know when the shift happened towards uh, computer fonts and you know uh, clip art and you know those kind of things when things decidedly got uglier uh, like a, a lot uglier and you know and and 
people are just throwing in things without any meaning or you know because you don't have that effort anymore you don't yeah. you know you don't actually have to sit and do like a physical application to kind of thing so you know you can throw in a like a some random gradation somewhere you can you know do all kinds of things stretch and yeah. squeeze an image in ways that you talking that, about a you know, sense of aesthetics right like so when someone learns aesthetic. powerpoint for the first time they put in all the effects absolutely like text flies from here absolutely. and then boing boing sounds happen and they're fascinated that's, by this toy that they're using and there yeah, is yeah uh, there, there is there exactly. is merit in learning to go from that to being aesthetically pleasing that's exactly right yeah that's i mean that's absolutely what it is uh, and and we, i mean and we do see i mean and you know even with even in the case of these um, uh, digital input devices like these uh, wacom tablets and uh, and then later of course you know now of course the ipads and so on are much more sophisticated but even even uh, uh, drawing on photoshop um there was a point when you know like a lot of illustrations that were done digitally on photoshop uh, particularly the coloring just didn't i mean because it, it just didn't have the capability to reproduce what uh, what you could do by hand and i i personally did not get into drawing on photoshop until you know literally maybe about i would say about 8 years ago or so or so until then i was doing everything by hand all my illustrations for children's books and this and that were all done by hand because you know it just couldn't re- replicate that then of course there were people like you know um uh, i mean the, the, the plenty of people i see who started kind of uh, actual illustrators who started creating brushes and things like that uh, which uh, which would really replicate uh, because they they saw the problems you know and yeah, they saw yeah. they they as the, as users they understood as users and illustrators they understood what the issues were and they started creating these things that kind of made the process a lot more refined so it's a, it's at a good place now and i wish it continued in that place so that we can all get you know keep using that and but suddenly now you know out of nowhere this ai has come in mm. and uh, and you know it i know i mean i've seen actually professionals who work at places like adobe and adobe is using uh, you know ai is in there in photoshop and so on but i know people at i mean at adobe who are sort of on on twitter and things like that who are uh, out there saying that you know this is going going to end uh, you know uh, illustration and human sort of made art uh, mm-hmm. as we know it and these are the top industry professionals who are saying this so you know they 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 need to be listened to i think so let me uh, let me kind of pull back a little bit because we have been going about uh, we have been like among other things we have been talking about all the threats to our way artistic way of life that is posed right. by this uh <clears throat> we spoke about how ai draws only from that which exists already because it can't draw from imagination because it doesn't have an imagination and the only imagination it seems to have is actually our imagination or the imagination of people who have already created the art on the basis of which it is trained my question is are we really that good like you know we we <clears throat> talked about visions of the future right visions of the future uh, but every detective story in some way is based on every other detective story that has been written in the past every piece of art is inspired by a sense of aesthetics that that artist has developed over the course of their lifetime by watching the work of other artists so uh are we kind of overestimating ourselves in the general order of things when we say ai will never be like humans when the actual response could possibly be humans are actually not that great like if i take right, the right. whole if i take the whole industrialization and employment aspect out of it and just focus on the yeah. capability bit uh, what do you think well uh, uh, i mean uh, i i uh, it's i agree with you to some extent uh, but i also disagree in a in a in a sort of a larger uh, sense in terms i mean not that i disagree with you but i, I no no i want you to disagree with me because this this is scary <laughs> yeah. to me i want you to tell me that something we have something <laughs> yeah well it, we do because because you know, these uh, uh these these uh, uh pro, these these sort of patterns that you're talking about that are being replicated over and again and which we do as well these are obviously you know these are the ways in which we communicate our craft to uh, you know whoever follows uh, so you know in writing if you, any writing course they'll say okay you know th- this is this is your sort of aristotelian story structure and this is what you follow and you know there is a you know you have this sto- sort of story arc and there's a point of conflict and then there's a resolution and all of that similarly in art 
you know, there are basic principles of, uh, you know, in illustration, there are basic principles of composition, color matching, things like that, which you have to follow in order to get uh, a, a sort of a decent result. And, uh, you know, things like uh, sort of symmetries, different kinds of symmetries and, you know, um, asymmetrical balance, symmetrical balance, all kinds of things. And these are all things that are taught to you, taught to everyone really in design school or art school, what, wherever you go, illustration. Uh, and um, these are things that you're meant to apply. And with the understanding that as you apply these things, you also knowing these rules will knowingly break them. Uh, and and uh, you know and break them very purposefully based on point. you know uh, yeah and yeah. and and this is something that I mean obviously you know I mean uh, sorry we we're seeing AIs at this point doing really strange things I mean you give give it a prompt and like the kind of things some of these things that they produce are genuinely weird and there is a an inclination I think there is a a fear from the side of the artist but there is a joy in the in the from the side of like a user who's do, doing this yeah. where like, you know, you, you see it, it seems like the AI is like really creative and coming up with these really crazy things that no one would have thought of. And you, there is a tendency to think of the AI as a creative, you know, a being mm -hmm. in, in that situation. Yeah. But I think I, I, what I, what I don't see there is intent. Uh, yeah, you know, obviously. It, the AIs are not creative. The AIs are not being weird with intent, and that is something that humans you know, my, can be. My fear is that be strange with intent. My, my fear mm. is that because this intent thing is so damn invisible in most practical aspects of life, right. if it just goes poof, nobody will notice. Because, uh, uh, but it's invisible by design, isn't it? I mean, we we want we don't want people to notice the edges. You know, and the, you know, the process that goes in, I mean, when I create, like when I'm sitting there and illust if I, if it takes me like a week to illustrate a really complex piece at the end of it, I, I don't want someone to look at it and think that, Oh, I mean, well, I do want people to think that I've taken pains to create yeah. it, of course, but I also don't want them to look at it and think, Oh, you know, this is a place where he originally made a mistake and then he kind of, Oh, he like figured out a way to kind of solve that and, in, you know, incorporate it into the final artwork. And then that's made it better. Yeah, any of that. Yeah. All those little annoying, like nitty gritty things, which I may take pleasure in as a creator. A huge, I don't really need them to know. A huge it. part of art uh, is uh, knowing how to hide your mistakes. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you're right. I mean, you're, you're right in that sense. Uh, my, see, my point, cases, my, my problem remains the same. If there is a difference between the way humans do things and the way the machine does things, that difference is there. It is known yeah. to you and I. It is known to those who appreciate art and understand art. But yeah. for most people, it is so small a difference that it will it doesn't matter. And so far, we have been content to not let it matter. So mm. maybe going forward, the way out of whatever problems we're facing because of this revolution is to make that difference more visible. I like, think there's a very easy way of making that way, uh, that how? difference visible. Because if you, I think if you boil it down to any of these things, any of these art forms being, uh, being primarily storytelling forms, hmm. uh, and you know, you can extend it to even commercial uh, things like branding and packaging and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, uh, advertising copy, you know, anything. Uh, these are all fundamentally storytelling uh, forms. And finally, you know, for me as a, you know, as a sort of a commercial artist, I have to be able to explain my decisions and my choices to a client. Uh, and the client needs to be able to explain it to, you know, whoever's funding them or, you know, whatever it is, the investors and so on. At every, for me, you know, I mean, obviously, I mean, at, at, at every point, the, uh, as a, as a practicing professional, I mean, the only way I can justify the money that I'm earning is by actually explaining that this decision I, I have made has relevance. What I don't see an AI is, I mean, what I don't see from these AI things is that half the time these seem, the decisions that I see in an AI generated illustration seem completely arbitrary to me, a lot of it. Maybe in terms of composition and, you know, in terms of what, you know, like some, no, some person holding about... an object standing on a mountain or whatever so, it is, those may be specifics, but in terms of the color choices, in terms of the textures, in terms of what kind of, uh, you know, style it is and all of that, 
Yeah, I, I interrupt you. I interrupt you because I yes, saw an please. NFT by you listed on the Stack Me page, and along with it, yes. there was a PDF which had a right. you know, uh, it was like the thought that went into this. So, do you think the That's way right. out of this? And this is actually like really interesting to me. Do you think the way out of this? The so here's the problem. Yeah. The problem is that the AI makes something, the human makes something. For most people, there is no way to tell the difference. But the difference between the AI art and the human art. is that the human art is accompanied by a commentary by the human about all the things that were yeah. going through his head when he made it yeah i How mean are... uh, of course you can you can retrofit something like that even to any yeah. piece of ai art you yeah. can generate ai art and you can create an entire narrative justification about it, say it, yeah. that these were these were and i mean and it is obviously something that human artists also do I mean, we we are all taught to faff in art school yeah. and you know we are all faffers we will you know we are very good at kind of explaining things why were the we, curtains that blue? Are... the curtains were blue because of <laughs> the blues in his yeah. yeah 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 something you know how that affects the character's mood and all of that you can do that but uh, you know the, the, we all i mean as humans we do have bullshit detectors you know and 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 do a lot we of people really, will see see do we the really bullshit. we have elected politicians purely on the basis so, of so their true. ability to bullshit i am not sure we are, our bullshit detectors are that finely tuned maybe maybe i'm just trying to be optimistic here so so maybe, maybe. i should <laughs> yeah no but that, i, mean, I it, think it I'm comes trying... down to i think it comes down to trust Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I'm trying not to. I'm trying to not kind of, you know, give give in to despair at this point. So, you know, these are straws. You're holding on to whatever at. is available. Yeah, but I'll tell you. I mean, as a as a professional, I mean, one of the I've been thinking a lot about how I I can pivot at this point because see, I've also now, you know, after about ten years of uh, the last ten years before that, I was in publishing, and then uh, the last ten years, I was sort of doing branding work for. Mm. for for this for for, for some beer mm-hmm. companies and so on completely different area of work from what i used to do earlier but now this last year i've been back in publishing and i had i have been consciously trying to build my illustration practice and that's when these ais have suddenly hit and it's really kind of given me this existential problem of what am i going to do going forward who am and, i and <laughs> yeah and and for me it has actually boiled down to this idea of um pushing the storytelling aspect and and i do i and and kind of thinking of myself i mean because I, i exactly that who am i i mean what what am i doing really and mm-hmm. why am i here and what what should other people kind of you know when they see my work what should they be associating that with and if it if it's just if people think of me as purely as an illustrator and this is i mean i mean general sort of advice to any illustrator i think who has probably not i mean who has not grappled with this issue i mean everyone is grappling with the issue but maybe some of the younger people who haven't adequately considered this issue i would i would also tell them that you know think of you know don't think of yourself as an illustrator who is mm. kind of uh, you know providing yeah. an illustration yeah. service but think of yourself as a storyteller who can use this skill in this way or maybe you know use that story storytelling skill in another way because yeah. we have i mean in terms of tools what we have right now in this modern age it's it's fantastic and i mean i have been an early adopter in pretty much ev- at every point uh, really and i and uh, 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 because I, i i like exploring these things but it's the first time i've been really scared to be honest with this particular thing but you know there are great tools available for us to kind of extend our, those storytelling principles and skills into many many domains mm. you know you can kind of uh, and i think our human uh, advantage really is to kind of meld all these things together to kind of you know uh, do it at a different level and i don't know where the, what that different level is uh, and you know i i don't think anyone really knows we are in such a sort of odd space right now where you know all kinds of things are happening that it it's hard to pinpoint where we can go from here but i do think in the next year uh, in the next year and a half next two years things are going to be very evident and mm. we will know for sure what's going to happen purely from desperation yeah, yeah, yeah. pure desperation when things jobs go away I've been, I've been running around. Be forced to pivot. I've been running around. I've been running around telling people about the feelings that Chat GPT is evoking in me as a writer. It, there, yeah. there's some. Somewhat... I saw. I watched your video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a little <laughs> bit of dread. There's a little bit of, wow, this I like, it's magic, and then there yeah. is like, what is going to happen to the industry? Because the media industry is going to like the news desk has been wiped out. The yeah. only person who's relevant at the news desk is now an editor. who just looks at the report corrects a little bit of you know adds a name adds something etc and that's it the news desk is gone 
if this goes yeah. on for six more months news desks in websites are gone news desks in newspapers are gone the ai can make determination about language it can look at an event it can write a report about it you can feed a video and ask the ai to look at it and write a report about it the ai can make but in terms entire... of analysis is it uh, kind of no 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 it's on the, the opinion level opinions can be faked yeah. by the way you can you can ask an ai yeah, right. to read these five yeah. news reports and write an opinion piece condemning this thing and it will write yeah. it if it can write a yeah. thoughtful essay about life and loss an opinion piece is not <laughs> hard to write i have read editorials but even so, those so, you know i saw your uh, i saw the video that you posted about uh, you know the uh, chat gpt you, you kind of made it create uh, these uh, stories about a witch and a, and, robot, and a yeah. robot and all of that and I, I did think though that you know they were fairly sort of uh, i mean at a plot i mean they're all essentially at a plot level not so much you know yeah. they weren't very detailed at a story level but even as plots they seemed like just sort of bad rehashings of these uh, wanda vision uh, yeah. you know uh, stories right yeah. uh, <laughs> like no, but that's now wanda vision Th- so there are two things <laughs> one is that's now yeah. right i also yeah. gave it a prompt later on where i said write a detective story with dialogue the detective's name should be oh. this and there should be five people okay. in a room with him it wrote half the story and how- it wrote half really? the story it couldn't solve it obviously okay. right because right. that yeah, takes yeah, a lot yeah. more complication but it wrote half the story right. an entire scene where the detective comes and yeah. says the killer is one of us etc etc that kind of templateish writing is something yeah. i have seen from actual human beings and the de- ai Absolutely. is doing at least yeah. as good a job as them so it's yeah, yeah the kindle ecosystem is full of books of that type <laughs> right i mean like yeah. just hundreds of the, whatever like a really uh, generic, genre fiction yeah really generic, yeah, generic yeah. but i'm talking about news reports if i can tell a thing if i if i can tell the ai write a letter to rajini telling her that i won't be able to make it to her son's birthday party this friday evening it does a fantastic job especially when i don't have an excuse it invents an excuse write a letter to a university saying you want to take uh, the entrance examination again because of a family tragedy it does a fantastic job people can totally use it for those purposes although i would rather they did not but i suppose most people will uh, but as far as writing a news report is concerned it, it appears to be a supremely easy job for an ai and what are the other things i, I mean in the writing entire world, web portals to... being powered by chat gpt yeah. right now people have to hire five people to monitor the news feed make a report out of it post a picture into it it's all gone i'm pretty sure it's yeah i mean gone. it was already happening to some extent where i i remember i mean that sometimes uh, you know you search for certain things you know while doing research on whatever and like uh, you'll uh, you'll come across like online you'll fi- find like about eight different articles on eight different websites which are essentially the same article yeah Uh, that some uh, bot would PTI. have just kind of they, replicated across they they yeah. read the pti news just for take SEO a report and... they make minor corrections and they upload it yeah and just to kind of get i, I suppose ad sales or whatever i think they just kind of uh, copy paste these things there were a lot of websites which are essentially just that but now now instead of copy pasting they can <laughs> generate original yeah. original you know you know stories, back in uh, 2012 there were uh, yeah. bots that at least some major international web portals were employing like suppose something happens and the first website to publish a report about it will get google status right to so like the first thing it turns up so i remember really badly written headlines by the bbc on top yeah. of the google news results page and that was happening because they had automated that aspect of it the moment something happens oh, they man. just select it the report goes up and then someone logs in and corrects it and changes the headline but the report at least That's goes crazy. up and this was 2013 you remember when head, like headline writing used to be a sort of art form <clears throat> art, right yeah. i mean editors would take pride in kind of writing yeah. beautiful headlines and now we are in a position mm. where the ai can do a fantastic job much better than some of right. the interns on the news desk so yeah. these things are kind of gone but let's come back to I mean, the... but it's like the some of these essential aspects of journalism like you know you know fact checking and so on which a lot of it has to be done on the ground with like you know yeah fact checking hasn't been essential of... for at least 8 years now that is actually true <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i i i i i i i wish it was but fact checking if uh, news like there are newspapers which have uh, openly expressed their intention that we are not in the news business we are in the advertising business and they're not really wrong as far as you know 
the uh, model of news right now is concerned i as i said earlier the solution to a lot of these problems will be just simple old trust like if if someone is a young artist and they are worried about ai taking away their audience because the ai is doing a fantastic job my advice to them would be just develop a level of trust with your intended audience that you will not violate make very clear that your art is human made and that you are not using ai and that they can trust you if you are using ai in certain aspects of it make very clear what aspect it is make very clear what boundaries you will not cross because if like this interview this video that will go on youtube in a few years i can totally imagine someone typing into a chat box somewhere create a one hour long podcast video conversation between vijendra mohanty and vinayak verma where vinayak verma has this opinion and vijendra mohanty has this opinion intersperse it with humor and upload to youtube and it will be it will it will get done yeah yeah absolutely it's so I mean, at that I'm, point I'm, the audience yeah. will have two choices the audience will have hey what i'm watching is this real or not at that point the only thing that will separate me from the other people is me literally saying hey guys this is actually me but even then how do you i mean it's just uh, that, so that's, that's a relationship probably exactly right? what an ai would say right no this that's is, a relationship I'm actually a human that's a relationship <laughs> because then my content will also have to be accompanied by actual real world uh, meetings and you know live sessions the kind of thing like even live sessions ai can do but if yeah. i i create a reputation for myself where i don't do ai and i am actually present and i am responding to real people on in the, in the form of a real conversation i think live streams are going to become uh, much more trustworthy than this recorded videos this is my worry you know i mean my, my worry actually for a lot of uh, artists and writers is uh, and musicians whoever like uh, dancers whatever any performer really i mean uh, any sort of not performer so that's actually the issue really any kind of creative person will have to kind of essentially become a performer yeah. it, everything all these processes will have to become more performative and uh, and the problem there is so many i mean so, so some of the most incredible you know writers artists they don't want to you know, yeah. people i know they are introverts who yeah. you know who do their best work when they're sitting alone they're sitting at home creating these works they put it out and you know they don't even uh, you know they they prefer not to talk about it let the work speak for itself and that's a way, i mean that's a thing that i completely respect as well Uh, i mean i i have phases when i i don't want to kind of uh, uh, i mean l- large phases actually where i i just don't want to meet people or talk mm. i mean uh, but uh, but no i think now, introversion now is you not... see that with instagram i mean with the tiktokification of social media you do yeah. see that i'm seeing so many uh, you know writers and like uh, you know people who are just constantly sh- sharing videos of well you <laughs> but, but in the in your no no i was talking about them doing a... like pointing at text and stuff <laughs> which is becoming yeah. ridiculous with each passing day journalists are doing this happened this happened as music plays in the background no and the the thing is this you know there's a difference between something that you know now in your case you are doing like this very professional setup where you know you have you have a kind of there's a system to this thing and you're doing there are plenty of people who don't understand what the production aspect of any of this and who are who because you know the culture demands that you have to perform Hmm. they they just kind of produce these these things which i mean it's very cringy at some level uh, you know there are i mean i know i mean so many people who are doing this who they really shouldn't be doing this and because they're just not good at it my, my I, point I is i wouldn't be good at it i yeah, no, you know my point is my point like is not everybody so, should have to do this and as far as thing, building right? trust yeah, is we're, concerned we're pushed into being forced to do, i mean we've been forced to do this now unfortunately my so point is a introversion will not be a hindrance in the path of building a trust relationship with your audience even if a writer wishes to not perform they can still at least they can at least have a public position on boundaries that they will not cross hmm. like you know hmm. so imagine a writer so living in a hill somewhere he sends out a newsletter to his audience every month saying hey this is what happened here are a few photos he can have his intern send it but as long as the reader the consumer of their content looks at their content and knows that this guy will never betray me this guy i know he's writing his own stuff uh, there are even writers who get their interns to write their stuff that's another level that's like we don't need ai to betray yeah. people and right and now that, there is a long tradition of that as well yeah, right? yeah, i mean yeah. they, I, you know, those hardy boys books and nancy drews and I mean, whatever so many of those 
those books back in the day were written by groups of people yeah and uh, i'm not a huge fan of it like you know i was half yeah. uh, half my life i've spent reading these stories and saying wow what a great writer turns out there is no writer yeah so yeah, right true. now the only thing that has happened is that uh, breaking the trust of your audience has become super easy the people who will stand out are people who stand very resolutely and say that we will not break our audience's trust we will make clear the terms of our engagement and this is what we stick to but uh, we have like very limited time available let me just ask you yeah. one question before we go which is in yeah. what way do you think ai art or algorithmic or chat gpt dali etc uh, can make our life easier as artists um, well i can i can see um, for a lot of people i mean i i honestly personally i would not use any of this as uh, sort of creative devices to kind of generate entire new ideas or any of that because i i just i value my own process far too much and i've i've you know i've been using my process for so many years i've built it to a point where i i i don't trust any other process really mm. but i do see a, a lot of people kind of using it for you know in the like in the case of the uh, you know the the video that you showed of this whole this, the the wonder vision scenarios uh, uh, and you know this i the idea that you mentioned of most stories uh, through in the past kind of following a certain pattern i think as a plotting device for instance in storytelling Yeah. Uh, or you know or as yeah, prompts or just as a compositional yeah as a yeah. compositional device in illustration whatever i'm sure a lot of people particularly if you're kind of doing really quick you have to quickly sort of generate stories or whatever it is i i do see value there where you create the plot and then kind of refine it using your words uh i'm sure a lot of people will do that and you're hmm. going to see a ton of that uh my, i mean in my case i i just i don't know i just i i Uh, for me that for me the idea generation itself is the most fun aspect yeah, of creating yeah 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 and then yeah and like and i was plotting, writing you know, i'm sure you are also right writing an outline or a plot of something right now right yes yeah uh, so i was yeah, today morning i was supposed to be doing that but then a bunch yeah. of things happened and i realized we had to talk but right after yeah. this or today evening i will be sitting down to do yeah. the most fun part of writing which is outlining a story right absolutely absolutely and when, yeah that is when the an most artist fun generates part. the ai to generate the yeah. outline or a prompt that itself is a kind of you know lessening of the entire endeavor it is it it definitely is and i mean but with wide acceptance of this as a means of uh, thing i mean we we will as you say lose out on a lot there will be yeah. a lot i mean it's 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 like uh, you know I, i mean going all the way back to uh, you know uh, the luddites Uh, i mean but when when i think the uh, when machines loom started kind of doing what humans were doing obviously there were things that were lost yeah, yeah. over there which uh, you know there there was a there, there was a certain handcraftedness that was lost um so the, but you know i mean we we will never know what what was lost actually really uh, unless you go to like a traditional lace maker which how often do you find come yeah, across yeah. a traditional lace maker these days you know so i suppose so, the conclusion uh, from our talk would be that we are most definitely going to lose something even as we gain yeah, some we other will. things yeah we will have to somehow roll with the punches i don't know i mean as a, as a society i don't know whether we will be able to roll with the punches but at, at an individual level i think we will uh, be forced to adapt and we should i mean there's hmm. nothing else to be done but uh, i have to say the technologists really need to be thinking about what they're doing and why they're doing it and just yeah. examine the reasons for these things other than a purely a monetary thing i mean i, I just saw it, uh, yesterday someone had posted a thing saying chat gpt is apparently spending about 3 million dollars a day or something maintaining uh, i mean you know uh, maintaining this thing whatever the the I, i don't, I don't know. know the exact okay. send you i'll send you the tweet yeah please do uh, but yeah it's insane i mean so if they're spending that kind of money just burning through that kind of money when before they even profitable i'm sure they're projecting a lot of income you know, yeah yeah for the next few years so let's see. so things will change in a big way they will push for it i'm sure they will push for it in a big way let's see uh, we will be like you know uh, i hope uh, we are able to talk about this in a couple of months time again when things are yeah. at a more dire stage because i'm sure they will be but thank you vinayak for doing this we have very little yeah. time left thank you for doing this i am uh, uh, grateful that you thank found time to uh, talk about this thank you for having me on your podcast yeah thank you thank you for uh, uh, you know allowing me to come and talk it's, it's uh, 
great pleasure to speak with you on on this the pleasure was all mine thank you so much vinayak thank you and uh, i will just thank remind you. everyone watching that this book is still available wherever you buy books and you should buy it it's <laughs> edited by vinayak it's a science fiction anthology it's called strange worlds strange times which is thank very you. apt so to the topic that we just discussed <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Vimo. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.